What's up, guys? It's Keith Kelf is with the Untrapped Podcast. I got Paul Jamison on the show and his book, Cut That Grass and Make That Cash. You got a new book that just came out, but your podcast has exploded, bro. You're all over the place. Green Industry Podcast, Paul Jamison. What's up, bro? What's up, Keith? Man, I'm excited to have you on here. So what's going on? Why, why you got that big smile? I just like hanging out with you, man. You made me laugh earlier. It's all contagious. the time. <laughs> what was so funny? Well, the, you just made me laugh when we we're talking off air. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah. You know, I kind of like it. You got it all nice and bright. Mine's all dark. If you're watching this on the uh, Keith Kelfis YouTube channel or listening on the pot, basically we're on video too. And now you've started doing video as well. So do you got a YouTube channel or is it your same YouTube channel? Where are you I uploading? I have two YouTube channels. So I have it. My entertainment YouTube channel. It's just my name, Paul Jameson. And I'm out there mowing tall grass these days, Keith, on that channel. Nice. And uh, <laughs> it's fun. And then um, the Green Industry Podcast with Paul Jameson, that's where we're putting all the video interviews. And what Joe Rogan does, what Oprah did, you mentioned Ellen earlier on my show, they're all in-person interviews. So my goal is to do 100% in-person as soon as possible, whether I have people flying into Atlanta or I'm going out on the road on podcasts. But for now, like you shared on my show, you got to kind of take what you get at the moment and i'm virtual for some of them but yeah the video interviews and the audio are out there love it paul jameson okay and also on uh instagram let's get all this out of the way where can people find your podcast <laughs> because you have to listen to paul like your intentionality is so where where again at green industry podcast that's my instagram handle and i'm on tiktok now which actually tiktok has more monthly viewers than youtube they just passed youtube uh tiktok does so i'm on tiktok at paul jameson that's powerful news where the most eyeballs are and you now i mean i already knew it was obvious to me and, and i'm not trying to ask you to toot your own horn or anything but have you're, you're probably the biggest podcast in the green industry and growing month after month yeah statistically it's the most downloaded podcast in the great industry and i know brian if you're listening he gets so mad at me we're always screenshotting back and forth and he's like congratulations you know he's probably punching the wall but yeah we're, we're we go back and forth and brian's one of my best buds and we're openly screenshotting our, our our stats and we share the same producer mr producer so he knows both our numbers too mr producer that guy's a, a brilliant guy and he's uh very talented as well i like him he's got a good heart too so yeah. I haven't met him in person, but if you don't know, he's the guy, if you listen to Paul's podcast, he's the one with the, the radio announcer voice. Yep. And now here's Paul. Yeah. He's awesome. He was my boss. You've been to the radio station I used to work at. He was actually my, you know, he was the assistant general manager. He was my boss essentially um, back in the day. And then when I transitioned from there, I asked him if he could help me with my podcast because what was happening was as people were listening on their mowers they couldn't hear it. It wasn't loud enough. And so he was able to master it. So it still had the quality, but it was loud. And and then the rest history, um, he, Brian hired him and then Caleb Allman hired him. And now a bunch of people, um, he actually has a job in Silicon Valley for a, a big company, um, as well, promote doing their podcast, man. That's awesome. So today in today's day and age, you can have your dream. You can do a day business and have another side hustle. You can have multiple businesses. There's so much stuff you can do. That was part of my next question is you were, uh, you are in every way, a professional radio show host personality announcer, and you cross pollinated with landscaping. And it was like, uh, you're, you're a believer and you talk about Christ and Boom. You just had this feeling to go full time. So you had an actual lawn care landscaping business. Can you talk about that transition and how your podcast took off? And Yeah, absolutely. So I actually started the lawn care business in 2011 with no business knowledge. This was, I was broke, busted and disgusted. You, you had a similar humble beginnings mm -hmm. and out of pure desperation, I started, um, the mortgage payment was $928 a month. So I'm like, I have to scrape together $928 a month just to pay my mortgage. And then, you know, all the other bills I had. So I was out there mowing, edging, trimming, blowing, working like a dog from the beginning of the morning till we call it dark 30, you know, it'd be dark and I'm still out there working and I could barely make ends meet. And so I was working so hard in lawn care landscaping, 2011, 2012, 2013. And then I started uh, going on YouTube 
um, because I was working at the radio station in 2013 and 14. They put me on the overnight shift from midnight to 6 a.m. So I typed in lawn care into YouTube and I'm giving you the full loop here. So just bear with me. But um, I started watching this guy named Geek the Freak, Greg Chisholm, and he'd be out there mowing these $25 lawns and and, uh, doing voiceovers. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. You know, I, I was learning so much. And then the suggested videos in the right hand side of old school YouTube, it would say you may also like. And then this Keith Kalfas guy gets in there and then and lawn care rookie. And this kid, when I say kid, he hadn't even gone through puberty yet. B&B lawn care. <laughs> so I started watching you guys in 2013, 2014, making the same exact mistakes as everybody. But I'm learning. I'm, I mean, I'm watching these YouTube videos. Like I'm, I paid more attention watching these YouTube videos than I did in high school. Like I was on the edge of my seat, learning this information, growing my lawn care business, growing my landscaping business. And I share all that just to say, I relate to the guys who are just starting because most of us don't charge enough. We, we do everything raggedy starting out. Cause you just don't know, like you share, we have an employee mindset. And now all of a sudden we're the owner of a business. So I, I was growing my business and, and turned the corner 2014, 15, 16, things started changing and I started getting better clients and charging more and, and running with efficiency and, and the business was going well and, and, and exploding in 2017, 18, I was doing the head coach Atlanta Falcons, the captain Atlanta Falcons. Like I had high end customers that um, were great. And I'm in, um, my buddy, Brian ring, he actually, I was in Minnesota in August of 2018 and he had given me a 48 inch mower and a trailer. And I was ha- spending some time with him in Minnesota and I had to drive the trailer and the mower that he gave me back to Atlanta. So I, it was a hot summer morning in, in Minnesota. I wake up in the morning in Minnesota. I drive through Wisconsin. I drive, I drive through Atlanta and my life changed. Pardon me, Atlanta on my way to Atlanta. I drove through Illinois and my life forever changed on this August day in 2018 I'm not in Chicago area anymore. I'm like in the middle of Illinois. It's nothing. It's stuff like cornfields. And I'm just driving. And I had a vision. And so if you had dream, do you have dreams at night where you're sleeping, Keith? Yeah, every night. Okay. So a vision is like a dream you're sleeping and you think you like, you think it's real. Like you don't know. Oh, I'm dreaming. Like at least when I'm dreaming, I'm like, you think you're like in a movie or like it's real life. You know what I mean? And so does that make sense to you? A thousand percent for me. Okay. So I'm driving down the highway at 75, you know, probably 85 miles per hour. Let's be honest. I'm driving down the highway and I have a vision. Well, this, this doesn't happen. I don't think this has ever happened in my life other than just one day where I, I watch like a movie. I forgot that I'm driving on the highway and I switch into this movie theme scene and there's guys that are driving pickup trucks and they're listening to my voice in the pickup truck. And then they're in like a shop, like a, a barn dominium or like a, you know, a landscape shop where you keep all your equipment and, and stuff. And, and I can hear my voice. Like it's playing on like a, a speaker or whatever, Bluetooth speaker. And I, it was, it went from scene to scene to scene. It was different looking guys, different trucks, different shops, different regions. And I watched it. It was like a movie. And then it ended. And I like woke up like a deer in headlights. Like, I'm like, Oh my gosh. And as I like, my eyes were back on the highway. I heard a voice, um, which was the Lord. He said, if you build it, uh, they will listen. Kind of like the movie, the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. It was like, if you build a baseball field, the legendary baseball players will come. Kevin Costner movie. I heard the Lord say to me, if you build it, they will listen. And I immediately knew everything I just saw. It's crazy now. Cause in 2022, it's all actually come to pass. It's like, Every day people are, you know, some guy was just in a bobcat and DM me right before we hopped on. I was like, I'm listening to you, dude. So that was 2018. But at the time I had a full-time rate, I had a full-time lawn care business and also had a radio show that was reaching a, you know, a ton of amount of people that was 29 hours a week. So I was like, I don't have any time to do anything other than run my lawn care business and, and, and do my, my radio show. What just so happened right after I had that vision, Naylor Taliaferro was coming down to Atlanta to film me for his get to know the pro series. I think I remember you and him went to lifetime fitness. I watched that video. Where he came <laughs> he, remember that series when he was interviewing y'all? Yeah, dude, that was awesome. So he comes down to the ATL and we go to waffle house. I don't know if you guys have those in Michigan, but they're all over the place here in Atlanta's hole in the wall, little breakfast joint. Do they have waffle house up there? No, but on the way to the GIE X year, Every single year when we're going through Ohio and stuff, we end up stopping at one. Okay. So me and Naylor, we're sitting in Waffle House, which you guys are down south, you know, it's just 
it's, it's raggedy. We're just sitting there. And I told Naylor, I said, Naylor, I just told him everything that happened. And he, Naylor's really, um, he comes from retail management. He's really kind of matter of the fact, you know, straightforward. And, and he's like, well, well, you got to start a podcast. He's like, you know, what, what else do you need to know? He's like, you start a podcast. Like I can't, there's no possible way I can start a podcast. I was like, I'm running my business. I'm doing a radio show. He's like, dude, you'd be a fool not to start your podcast. And so me and him, the, you've been to the radio station where I used to work at. There's a Waffle House right around the corner from there. That's where we were. So we literally went from the Waffle House to the radio station where I worked at. It was on a Sunday. No one was there. And so I recorded Naylor for two hours. We just went in the studio, same studio. I interviewed you and Keith and me and Naylor talked for like two hours and, and had so much fun. And he's like, dude, he's like, I got to go to the airport. I'm about to miss my airplane. And um, so I, I chopped those two hour interview into three different shows. And uh, those were like my first few episodes. And so I started that podcast 2018 and I started cranking out content. Well, the audience started growing throughout 2018, throughout 2019. By the time 2020 came, the show was like really popular and, and for, a, for a niche like lawn care. And, and, and I started feeling this responsibility like, man, every single morning people are depending on me to provide value to their life. But I was so preoccupied just running my lawn care business that that took all my time, energy and effort. And so I was in this predicament in 2020 where I was like, I can't juggle this anymore. And so I put a two weeks resignation into the radio station, which if you're in broadcasting and you have a primetime show on a major Atlanta radio station, that makes you're like the top of the career. You know what I mean? It's like made no sense, but I, I put a two week resignation in and, um, I quit the radio job. And then I said, I'm going to start, it's going to probably take me two years, but I was like, I'm going to start a transition from the lawn business into the podcasting and, and do the podcasting full time and be a servant, like provide the highest quality audio and then the highest quality content possible on a daily basis every morning um, to help folks avoid the mistakes that you made, Keith, that I made in my early days and, and to really start taking the business to the next level. And it was blowing my mind that millionaires were listening to me, even in 2020, I was meeting people who are net worth millionaires. It's like, dude, I love your show. I listen to your show. I was like, what? Like you listen to me. I was like, yeah, dude. And, and I was like, it, it, my mind was just blown. Like the, not just the Chuck and the trucks that are listening to me. And I love that. I, I used to be Chuck in the truck, but like actual, like very established, successful people were listening to the show as well. And it put so much pressure on me in a healthy way, but in a very real way, it's like, dude, I have to step up my game. And so I started transitioning to my schedule. It wasn't um, like an overnight switch, but it was like, okay, I was given 90% of my time to lawn care and 10% to my podcast. And it was like 80, 20, it was like 70, 30, 60, 40, 50, 50. And now the scales tip to where the, the main part of my time is podcasting. You know, I'm a full-time podcaster now. And then the landscaping is like the side hustle now, you know, I still, I was actually doing a little job this morning with my buddy, Joe, but you know, but it's, it switched gears to where it's, now my main time, best of Paul is going to podcasting now. I'm just letting that just sink in, bro. There was so much valuable information. So and one of the things that you said was, man, when you, when guys have a million dollar business is listening to you and you're like, you're listening to me, but then it put pressure on you in a positive way. So, if you and everybody listening right now, if you only knew the people that were watching and paying attention, there are people that are watching, but maybe you're just not on your game yet, but they're watching. And you're and if you were only aware that if you just stepped up to the plate in this whole and I don't mean I, I know you're hustling, I know you're working hard, I know you're out there getting it and doing everything you can, right? But if you just took yourself more serious and was more consciousness, had more consciousness around that at the next level. You know what? You, it's like you're stepping into it and you're owning it, that you really are a professional. You really are the man that you always wanted to be. I, I am that. Boom. That very decision alone changes and makes all these opportunities just start falling in your lap. But they were already there. They were just waiting for you to be ready. And when you're ready, boom. It's like that. And so a lot of us don't look at ourselves and see 
how much we actually have going for ourselves. And it's like, so what was it about you that gave you the courage and the confidence to step into it? Was it a pure faith thing? Were you scared? Like, um, I think for me, it was, um, my schedule. I, I was looking at starting work at, you know, in, in the morning and, and working till dark 30. I realized there's no way I'm going to be able to build the type of show that I want as a little bit of leftovers at 10 30 PM or, or 11 o'clock PM. Cause I'm just so tired after I worked all day. So I was like, I have to start restructuring my schedule to where at 10 a.m. in the morning or, or 1 p.m. in the morning. It doesn't have to be every day, but if I can set aside a day to batch content um, and give like the best. Like actually wake up in the morning, I go to the gym, I eat a healthy breakfast, and then I go to the studio while I'm, my energy level is at 90 or 100%, and I bring like my best to the broadcast rather than working all day and then, you know, 10.30 at night throwing on the video camera and the audio and you know what I mean by leftovers? Like I got nothing to give to anyone because I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go to bed. And so I don't remember the exact question, but I had to, I had to figure out a way. How can I, let's just use Mondays as an example in, in real life to this um, year. Mondays is my batching day. So I try to get as much content. You know, I get in the studio about 9 a.m. and I'll work maybe till 7 or 8 p.m. on Mondays, but I can batch like six or seven episodes on a Monday that are really good with all my energy. And, and so I had to I had to carve out the time in my schedule so that I could make better shows. And in order to do that, I had to let go of revenue and, and let go of business um, to, to create that um, content. And I can hear your audience say, well, you should you should have just hired someone else to do it or whatever. And I tried that and it stressed me out. I, I couldn't I couldn't manage someone else managing my business and do this podcast. So I, I, I kind of had to cut my losses. And go I off. mean, to back you up on that. Uh, well, actually, they just got rained out. So I got a couple guys just uh i hope they finished i don't know if they finished but they're on a job and just dealing with all the administrivia of managing people i don't like managing people it's it's so much work that it sequesters your bandwidth and ability to do other things because i mean this is real people like but it sounds like for you, it's like a, it fits like a glove. You get in where you fit and you understand it. You're consciously clear about it. And it's like different strokes, different folks. It's funny how me to me how like you, critics, people will come out and say thing. Well, why would you do that? That's stupid. Or I would have done this. Or like, well, that's what you would have done. That's mm -hmm. what maybe you would have. Like people are so quick to criticize other people and trash talk when. But but hey, when you put your stuff out there on social media and you talk and you do have a podcast, you are opening yourself up to criticism. So, well, but, I think one of the go ahead. No, I'm one of the good. reasons why I think the show is popular mm -hmm. is because of the vulnerability of here. I just share my honest story, so it's not this um, plastic fake company that's got it all together. That's like, yeah, do this, this, and that, and the other. People can't relate to that, but people can relate to your YouTube videos when you're out in the parking lot and you know, it's cold and it's dark and it, you're, you know, it's like 2am and you're like, I got ripped off. I should have charged more. You're like, like that's what people like, you know, on YouTube and, and with podcasting and my guest, um, I just interviewed a guy named Jarvis down in Mississippi last week and he was so real and so authentic. And I was asking Mr. Producer, I was like, why did that show have so much traction? Like that show was so popular when you look at the analytics and stuff like that. And we realized Jarvis was just so real. He's so authentic about his story. He's actually a solopreneur now. And he, he realized he had to, he had to downside his business because he's about to lose his marriage because he's, he was so overwhelmed and he just shared vulnerably. He's like, my marriage is way too important. I'm, I went this route because of this and he saved his marriage and it was, it was authentic and vulnerable. So I think that's um, part of why the show's popular is because my guests and myself, we try to just be real, like, straightforward this is this is what's really going on in our business rather than some of these shows that are so polished and fake if you will um so we're kind of like organic underground root podcast but it's it's getting popular i love it that's powerful how many episodes have you released and how many downloads do you guys have right now and yes. how much per month and all that yeah let me i'll pull it up so we're we're accurate here so mr producer my fact checker because he he sees all my back end analytics so um one million. You, uh, I've never mentioned before, real quick, a uh, side note. M when you say Mr. Producer, get guys that listen to my show might not know who he is. Oh. If, if you listen to the Untrapped podcast, my podcast, and you might have heard it already on the show, an ad comes in. And uh, and now here's Keith. 
like well, I, I totally destroyed, I botched that because he sounds amazing. That's Mr. Producer. He's the guy that you hear the radio show announcer voice, and he's a real guy, and he's really awesome. So what, Paul? Yeah, and, and his nickname, I, I nicknamed him Mr. Producer because he didn't realize he was going to get like so much attention. And so I, I guess he just kind of rolling with this nickname or whatever, but <laughs> he's a I, rock star. Yeah, it's bizarre. So uh, February, which is the off season, uh, we had 102,000 downloads podcast. March, which now you're starting to get in the spring rush a little bit, 121,000 downloads. And then April, when the spring rush started, we had 142,000 downloads in one month talking about a lawn care business. Like it's a niche show. That's we just talked lot. about it. Yeah. So to date, we're at 1,542,710 downloads. Um, Boom. That's is, good, bro. Yeah. So, it's, so it's, are the majority of those on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Apple's number one, Spotify's number two. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Dude, that's nice, man. So that means people all over the world are listening. Just maybe even guys that work at an office job and they're listening in. There are people listening. Yeah. And, and we get a lot of stories like that of folks that are getting the boat close to the dock. They hate their job. They want to, they're, they're thinking about starting a lawn care business and they're, they're listening in, to the show in advance to get prepared. So when they start it, they can have a proper foundation and, you know, make that leap and uh, be profitable. So, so Paul, uh, I've said this before and you're a super humble guy. So I'm not trying to like, uh, what the word is, I'm trying to stroke your ego, but the way I don't know about other people, but I know the way that I see you and the way that I perceive you. So <laughs> you I'm, I'm laughing because I'm this is an observation. You can feel free to take it as a compliment, but it's just an observation. How about that? You are you're the dude. And I can when I listen to your podcast, I I imagine millions of people listening to this, and you were chosen for this position. Like this is your calling and you serve people on, on so many levels in different ways that you probably don't even comprehend. And what you're doing is such a powerful and such a good, good, good thing. And I just, I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Keith. I absolutely love what I do. Like to me, broadcasting is, it's so much fun. Like it, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. it, it it's a blast. Okay. And I want to uh, be mindful of your time, but I want to say, um, because you do have a podcast and I'm promoting like crazy talking about it so much. Uh, two, two, two quick things. You, you, you can do it. Time. I got 26. I got, I got, right. I got, I got plenty of time. Okay. And whatever order you want, what is like one of the hardest things you've had to come through that you have overcome in your entrepreneurial life? And then two is what are some of like the best podcast shows that you've had that people should go back and listen to? Yeah, totally. So the biggest hurdle that I think I've overcome in business, and when I had you as a guest on my podcast, we touched on this a little bit, but that was pricing. And so I just truly didn't understand how much overhead it actually takes to run a business where you have the right people on the bus. So I think it was Gerber in the, the E-Myth um, book where he taught, there's there's several books I intertwine because I'm always listening to audio books and, and learning, but I heard him teach that as the owner of the business, you need to be able to go to the beach, which I'm going to the beach actually this uh, Sunday. Good for you. you. Need to be, thanks. I can't wait. Uh, you need to be able to go to the beach for three weeks and your business can just run without you. You just sitting there putting your coconut oil on and, and drinking your Essentia water, listening to the waves and the general manager's running your business and the salesman's doing his job and the, um, bookkeepers are doing their job and the technicians are doing everything's running in your business and you as the owner you're not wearing all those hats and so what happened was when i started my business i didn't have that vision and i was wearing all the hats and my prices were so low i was able to pay my bills and pay myself but then it was like that was it and so my biggest mistake was i didn't properly price my services in lawn care in podcasting and in both of them with that big real business mentality. And so my prices were Keith were way, way, way too low. And I had to raise my prices. I had to learn my worth. I had to, and you shared this so beautifully on my show. 
I have to really understand how business is, works. If Paul Jamison takes this hat off and somebody else puts this hat on and I have to pay them, how do I build a business that way and, and getting those um, those prices on point and really figuring out my overhead cost recovery, what I need to earn per hour, what I need to earn per day, and, and then make sure I'm hitting those numbers. And so that was a, by far the biggest mistake. And I'm in process of correcting that mistake and getting my pricing on point um, so that I can build something special uh, with the proper pricing. The Can I switch to the other answer now? Or is, is that sufficient? Mm, you can keep going. To, to answer the best episodes or to talk best about? Best episodes now. Okay. I'm just playing around with you. Okay. So the best episodes, uh, episode number 200 uh, has Liz and Brian Fullerton and they share the story and they, and, and Brian, I'm in his family room and he's got tears dripping down his face and Liz is absolutely, I mean, they're both crying and I'm crying, I, but I, I was trying to keep it together, but they were, they were crying. And the reason they're crying in episode 200 is because they had just bought and I don't even think it was pro public information. They just kind of told me because I happened to be in their living room that day. But they they had just bought three acres. And they were crying as they were telling me that they bought three acres because this was 2020 when they were telling me this. In 2018, they had a vision board. They were living in a raggedy one-bedroom apartment, 700 bucks a month, stains on the floor. And they had a vision board where they had their goals. And one of their goals was to get this plot of land, was to get this acreage. And uh, Liz tells the story where um, Brian walks in and Liz had taken the dreams that were on the vision board and she had ripped them up and she had thrown them on the floor and she was just fed up with Brian and, and, and that they weren't getting anywhere and that their life sucked. And so she took their dreams literally and ripped them to pieces, threw them on the floor and she went to bed crying, went to the bedroom crying. Well, Brian walks into the kitchen and he sees their dreams ripped up on the floor. So he starts crying and he picked the dreams up, which is a shredded piece of paper now. And he put them in a little Ziploc bag and then he put the tape on the bag and he put it on the refrigerator. Like we're going to accomplish this stuff. And so fast forward from 2018, their broken dreams actually became a reality with the purchase of their three acre land that you guys have probably seen on YouTube, but Brian and, and his boys mow it. And so they start crying, telling me that story in the, the point of the episode 200 was that you need to have a vision for your life. You need to actually have a vision board. I have a very full vision board with so many goals that I have financially, physically, relationally. Um, this thing is, there's no room on my vision board. It's all full with goals. And so that episode is so powerful because they have proof that if you have a vision and you write it down, and you actually put it on your vision board or, or you write down your goals and they're measurable and they're specific. And then you actually take the baby steps to get traction, to go to those goals that you can accomplish those goals. And so it was so cool to see them on a mountaintop climatic experience where they just achieved the goal and then look back and be like, Oh my gosh, do you remember when we used to sit in that $700 a month apartment with all of our car debt and all of this and all of the, that, and then actually come through that and, and uh, accomplish their goal. That's that's a really popular episode, episode number 200. Bro, you almost had me crying because everybody can relate to that. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, dang, I just spent $90 on a dream board, a big cork board at Office Deco, Depot. I brought mm -hmm. it home. I was like, you spent $90 on it. It's huge, right? Because now we're putting all of our dreams on it. And Go ahead. Yeah. And uh, one thing about Brian, somebody commented on one of my YouTube videos. Scrubber, ducky, Brian, or some people don't like him, just like some people don't like me, or I see everybody probably likes you. But it's like, I know Brian personally, and when you really actually get close and know him, and he bears his heart to you, he's a, he's a great guy, man. He's a brilliant dude, and he's generous, and he's come a long way. But, but anyways, um... What were you saying? Vision board. You spent $90 on a cork board and your wife got mad at you. She didn't get mad. No. She was like, that was 90 bucks. I was like, yes, uh, this is our dreams. Because I thought about it. I was standing in Office Depot and there was a little one for 36 bucks. And there was a big one for like 90 bucks. And I was like, hmm, how big are my dreams? I mean, 
if this dream board thing really works and it can really speed up the process and we're talking about your dreams here <laughs> this is your life i'm going to get the bigger one and i'm going to start so i've already printed out and got a picture of this beautiful uh this golden eagle log and timber homes it's like a beautiful home but it's like a log cabinish mm -hmm. dream home bro boom put it up on there and moving forward with all that type of stuff and yeah at my church on saturdays uh with the youth they have a, it's called the holy spirit vision boarding and they'll have um the, the, you have to be like ages 15 to 24 whatever and they just did this last saturday all the women in the church so they went and they took their vision boards and they just prayed like God, what is your vision for my life? And then they was print out pictures and put it on their vision board. And by the end of the, the session, they had their vision boards completed. And um, it's cool to do that in a group. But I, I just personally did mine. Uh, it's completely full. I went to a home or office depot or whatever, and I laminated all the pictures. So I, I print out really high quality pictures and then I laminated them. So they're real, you know, professional looking and a good color printer. And then I cut them out and now I have them on my vision board and I look at them and it's in my office. I look at them day in and day out and day in and day out. And, and subconsciously you just start um, envisioning it. One of the things on my vision board is Rush Limbaugh's house. Now Rush Limbaugh passed away like a year and a half ago, um, but he has a mansion in Palm Beach, um, which is like one of the most expensive places you could live in the world. And he actually had the biggest radio show in, in the history of the world. And he did it from his house on the beach. The, the biggest radio show that influenced the most people was done in his house, the excellence and broadcasting house there in Palm beach. So I, for example, I printed out his exact, you can find his exact house on, on um, Google. And um, I printed it out and I put it on my vision board because I want to have a nice house one day. That's got an awesome studio in it. And so for example, I just put his home on there. Um, I have Logan Paul's, home on there uh he has a cool little studio uh, my vision's bigger than his but for the studio but anyway he's got a, he's interviewing gary vaynerchuk and they're sitting in the impulsive studio in puerto rico and um so i printed out his new little studio you actually met logan paul didn't you <laughs> yeah we were at his house for like three days it's a whole nother story but anyway I, i'm not highlighting him but i'm highlighting his studio i just like his studio so i have it on my vision board because I told you when you interviewed me, I want to build a podcast studio. So I'm thinking about it every single day. And then when I go to sell a job, right, I put my shoulders back. I put my chest out. That stuff ain't cheap, right? Like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to raise my price. And because, because it, it stretches me to make more money so I can accomplish my goals. And, um, I mean, we'd be here for hours if I went through every single picture I have on my vision board or word I have, but back to episode 200, Brian and Liz really, because I, I, for whatever reason before then, yeah, I heard all the experts say, yeah, you need to write down your goals. They need to be measurable and specific. And I, I could regurgitate all of that, but I wasn't actually living it. It was just in my mind. It wasn't actually in my day-to-day um, -day life of setting goals. So when I sat there and watched Brian and Liz um, cry and tell me that if you have a vision board and you stick with it, you can accomplish your goals. That was really influential in my life. And then when I came back to Atlanta, I literally bought a vision board from Target, like Liz told me, but it was just sitting on my wall empty. And Pastor O called me one day, my pastor, and he said, hey, Paul, do you have a vision board? And I said, I actually have one. I have nothing on it, but I have one. And he's like, I really feel like you need to get with the Lord and find out what his plan is for your life and then put pictures that represent that in words. And I, so I've done it. Um, so anyway, I share all that. You asked me what my most influential episode was. It was episode number 200 because it transformed my personal life. Um, I take vision boarding and goal setting so serious now, and I, I've gotten so much traction. I've had more traction in the last two years than the than the previous 10 years. You get my life, my life moved so slow for like 10 years. And then the last like month and, or year and a half, it's been like, whoo, like the, the needle has moved so much. It's just like, some days I'm just like, this is crazy how much things are excelling. Bro. <laughs> when you describe stuff, I'm actually experiencing it. I've left my physical space and I'm in this dream when you talk. Phenomenal. 
I just want I want to stop right there. That's good. I want everybody to go check out Paul Jameson in the Green Industry Podcast. Go there on Apple or Spotify. It'll pop right up and subscribe. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate you having me on the show. Man, and if you don't already, go get a dream board. I'm, dude, I'm now going to go buy a high-quality printer and a laminator and make it well, like you can super. Just, you can just go to Office Depot. And what I did is I had um I had downloaded all the pictures on my phone. So when you go to Office Depot, they have a really high-quality printer there. It's going to print it way better than a, a personal printer. Mm -hmm. And so you you just type in, it'll give you like an email address on that printer at, home, at Office Depot. And then I just go on my phone and I open up my email and I type in that email address and then I send all the pictures from my phone to there and their printer. It's so nice. Like it looks. Oh. Yeah. Cause you want to use their printer. But where did you get them laminated? At, at Office Depot as well. You did it all right there. So you just got oh, it all Office together. Max or Office Depot. Yeah. They have a little in the corner of the. If you walk in the door to the one I go to, it's Office Depot or Office Max. I don't know. They got Shaquille O'Neal like advertisements all over there. So you walk in there, you can go to the right, and they have like a printing center. And you print it first on, on high quality color printer. And then you go to the, the guy working there and he'll look at you like, what is all this? You know what I mean? Where do you get the high quality images? Do you go to Google Images and then you yeah, just write you, the only yeah, high I just, quality? I just go in Google, type in images, and I, I, I look for um, like the best of the best of the best um, pictures. And then you ask the person at Office Depot to laminate everything. And then they'll offer to cut it, but I'm I'm so particular about it. I'm like, You're, I'm going to cut it. So I, I they have a big cutting board there, and I cut it. And uh, it's just wild. Even what's on my vision board now, how much traction I'm making towards some of these goals. It's, it's scary. One of my visions uh, at night who here, man, I'm opening up another loop, so I'll just make it quick. I love to go on eBay. I love old, expensive, vintage microphones. I have an obsession with it, and I've never told anybody this. Like Telefunken's, uh, Neumann U87's, the original Blue Bluebird made in Latvia, freaking U47's, um, a stop why I'm, oh, the, the blue actual bottle mic with the different mic attachments. Then you got the um the you got the road uh this that's not old vintage but you have the road procaster procaster you got the road broadcaster and then you got the mxl bcd1 is that what you're on right now yeah that's what i'm using. or is that the uh, rev 320 no it's it's the uh mxl bcd1 then you got the Heil pr40 you got the you got all these you got the shore sm7b and i love the different tones and characteristics and nuances of these different mics like i just spent a thousand bucks on the mkh416 sennheiser it's a professional movie grade uh shotgun microphone producer has that one yeah yeah no. and is but these microphones don't lose their value if anything they go up in value so they're actually like you know uh real collector's items but um anyways that's a whole different thing but whatever motivates you man whatever motivates you yeah and you have to have a vision with everything that's going on in the world today you'll get sidetracked or uh, distracted so easily if you don't have a vision of, of what god put you on this earth to do and if you don't know, if you're like, I don't know that, you know, we, that's an emergency, man. We got to figure that out. And then once we figure that out, we got to, we got to have that vision. Um, so that during the day at 10 AM or 11 AM or 12 noon, I got to ask is what I'm doing right now, helping me accomplish, uh, I would call it God's will, or am I distracted on something that's a distraction and vanity? And it really helps me to stay focused so that I'm making the most of every single day and um, having a schedule and sticking to it, um, living a very intentional life, uh, the power of a focused life. Thousand percent. I went to bed last night. I was a little stressed out over the last week. My We had to reschedule our show here because my basement uh, had a mild flood and now it's an insurance thing. And it's, that's stressful when it happens in your basement. But uh, I pray, I pray to uh, God, please make whatever your will is for my life, let that be done. I want your will, not my will. Cause your will is obviously the best will. Even if it's something I don't like this whole thing of surrendering. And like, I've learned that from you. I've called you uh, and you've prayed with me over the phone and things like that. And like, thanks so much, Paul, you're a great influence on me. And anyways, let's wrap this up check out Paul's book. 
Cut That Grass and Make That Cash. You can find it on Amazon, anywhere books are sold. You probably got an audiobook version on audible.com, do you? Yep. Do you Cut have a new grass, book out make too? That cash. Yeah, the new book is narrated by Mr. Producer. Nice. 101 Proven Ways to Increase Efficiency and Make More Money in Lawn Care. It's literally 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. I go through 101 practical tactics that you want to make sure you are doing um, to, to make more money in business. And so it's 101 proven ways. Paul Jameson, anything else you want to say before we go? Yeah, come hang out with us on the Green Industry Podcast. And I got another secret project I haven't publicly announced yet, but just hang out with us on social. And when it when I let the cat out of the bag, you'll know. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And if you like the show, go to um, the... Go to Untrap Podcast on Apple or Spotify. Leave us a well-worded positive five-star review. It helps boost the ratings of the show. Hey, you're a podcast professional. Is there anything else that I should be asking them, Paul, at the end? What do you do? I do one. So I do one really good call to action at the end of the show. Yeah. And then what I have to start doing better is after that call to action is asking for a rating and review. So um, I think you did a pretty good job, Keith. Awesome. Please go leave the review to take you, you 60 go. seconds. All right. Later, guys. Thanks, Paul. Go check out the Green Industry Podcast. Bye. See ya.